Well, it's August 26th. Really a nice evening out here on the shooting range, and something I thought I might want to, or thought I might be interested in trying. Would be I loaded up some 160 grain Lee uh, cast bullets, and, and these are tumble lube. Well, they're not. Yeah, they're tumble lube. They're not an actual tumble lube bullet. And I've got four grains of of bullseye um, loaded on these things, which is a you know a very light load. I'm getting speeds around between. Uh, uh, mid 600s some up in 700 range so since that load of bullseye is very small in this large case I thought it'd be interesting to see whether or not the placement of the load makes any difference so I'm gonna do a shoot four of these with um, making sure that I've tapped them down like this so that the powder would be in the by the primer area I'm using a CCI primer and there's a Starline uh, brass that we're using here and then I'll also shoot um, four when I Move the powder towards the uh, towards the bullet end, and just see if I see any difference in the in the speeds here, and maybe also if that makes a difference where they shoot on the paper at 21 yards. So we're gonna get this loaded up and and uh, see what happens. Okay, so the way that we're gonna run this, we're gonna load one one at a time, shoot one at a time, and the first shot fired will be one where the powder has been placed towards the primer end. Second shot, uh, we'll place it towards the uh, uh, towards the projectile, the slugs end, and we'll alternate that. Hopefully that way we can kind of eliminate uh, barrel warming and some other factors that might enter in uh, that we're not aware of. So, okay, we'll get this going then. We'll shoot our first shot. There's a couple things we should uh, say and, and take a look at before we examine the target here that we just shot. And one of them is the bullet design here that we're using and the reason we selected the, the 160 grain slug over, say, the more standard 250 grain slug that's more or less been standard for years and used in the, in the Colts is that we've got a lot shorter bullet here. And if I line these up, with their um, crimp grooves here, we're going to see that the larger one, the 250 grain, would occupy more of that um, case than the smaller one. So I was thinking I wanted to see, kind of exaggerate to see what the powder placement might be. It would be better to have a, um, a slug in there that didn't use up more of the case. Therefore, I kind of would um, exaggerate the, uh, the powder placement more inside the case. Another thing here is for those that maybe aren't aware of what bullseye powder is and what four grains would look like, we've got a charge here of four grains, so it's not a lot of powder that's in that case. It probably comes up maybe, well, I'd say about a quarter inch on the on the base, and then that slug is gonna is going to um, take up some more of the space here if we can get that arranged, something like this. So if we have our powder down in this section. And we've got a whole vacant area up in here. And if that cartridge is laying on its or a side like this, that powder has probably drifted some along the side, I'm sure. But basically, if it was down to the, in the primer section area of the of the cartridge, it probably would remain pretty much in that area when you tilt the gun down. So anyway, that's probably the main reason that we selected the the lighter 160 grain over the 250. Another important thing I think to realize is we just did eight eight shots and um, the results that we get certainly should not be taken as, as gospel but I think with eight rounds I could probably get some idea of whether or not the placement of the powder up towards the, the front end here of the, of the cartridge or uh, towards the rear would um, make much difference at all as far as the, the speeds and maybe even where they're showing up on target so okay with that said let's take a look at that target. Also here's a group that we shot out of this uh, seven and a half inch 45 and of course with a small lightweight bullet like 160 grain which is giving us a recoil very similar to a, a mediocre uh, 38 load it's not going to recoil the barrel up too much and it's going to get out the barrel uh, pretty quick so I'm expecting to shoot low and of course it did and here's the, the group that we that we ended up with 
I've got one possible flyer, I think, out of that, out of those eight shots. And this uh, paper here is ripped. You can see where the way that was ripped compared to other ones that went in more or less straight. I mean, got a little bit of rip on that one. And also, I'm seeing a lot more uh, darker area here than this. Now, maybe the way the paper tore, but with that shot down in here, I'm kind of suspicious. Okay, so looking at the one where we placed the powder um, towards the towards the um, primer end, I got the P up here for, for primer end, would be uh, in this section here. First shot, second, third, and then we, we doubled uh, the third shot here on this. Average speed of about 700, and deviation was was really decent there, I think mean, a six and a half average for an average deviation between those those four. And then our even numbers here were when we placed the the powder as much as we could towards the towards the bullet end, so I suppose it ends up in here someplace. We had uh, had these range, this range of of uh, speeds, with an average of six fifteen. And you know every one here I think was lower than any ones on this on this side over here and 15 to 98, so we got almost uh, what an 85 or 83, whatever, <clears throat> whatever the difference is here in uh, in speed. So considerably less. Like I say, we can't take it as gospel, but it certainly is indicating that that powder placement um, in this large case you know, making quite a difference. And a deviation bump way up to up to uh, 42. I numbered the shots here, so shots that are odd numbers one, three, and five. We're done with the um, and seven up here. We're done with the location by the primer. You know these are showing really good um, results, but I don't I don't think it's really as much that as it is the um, you know, the, the the placement as much as it is my sighting because it's very easy not to take the right amount of height on this. And I also have a hard time focusing on that black section here, telling where it is in the paper. But I can usually see my paper well enough to get um, center of paper where my where my uh, aiming spot is here. But up and down this way is a little tougher. And if we look at that string kind of in here, with the exception of this one, maybe the flyer and over here, um, I'm kind of verifying that. So we had our shot seven, one, three, and five, and then two, four, six, and eight were with the when the pry, uh, powder was near the near the bullet end. So quite a quite a difference, I think, in the in the velocities uh, as far as the group goes. We're not going to you know comment too much about that, but. It's shooting a pretty decent group for that uh, for that bullet uh, at that range. So, anyway, maybe this will be interesting or helpful for somebody that's not aware of this. I know a lot of shooters um, already know this information or are aware of it, especially 45, 70 shooters. If they're shooting some type of, um, of modern smokeless powder in their thing, sometimes they'll put some kind of a filler in here to keep the powder in the section where they want it in the in the case. So, this is not not new information for everybody, but maybe for somebody that's a first time beginning shooter, uh, might want to look at that uh, data we've got here and start thinking about it.